Yay! Setting it up. Awesome, awesome. Welcome, everybody. I am so excited to share this interview with John and Tamara all about their series. Setting it up. Awesome, awesome. I knew this. Welcome, everybody. I am this is so just what excited. On. And Tamara, on, all about their series. Setting it up. Awesome, awesome. I knew this. Welcome, everybody. I am <laughs> all about their series. Setting it up. Awesome, awesome. Welcome everybody. I am all about your series. Is that our Facebooks because they're open? I think so. Mine's closed now. Yep, mine is too. Okay, okay. Right. That was quite funny. That was <laughs> you had three echoes. It was brilliant. <laughs> all right. Well, here we are. This sometimes it just happens, right? We just get to figure out where the echo is and close it down. So, um. Those of you that are welcoming uh, Dawn and Tamara here with me, so super excited because these are two amazing women. Dawn and I have known each other for several years, and I'm so super excited. When I heard about this book, I absolutely was like, oh, please let me interview you. Let me, you know, have people hear more about your work because it was really, really powerful. So thank you for being here, Dawn and Tamara. This is just so exciting. So I'm just going to open it up and just kind of have Dawn, you shared with me a little bit about the light weavings um, series that you and Tamara came up with. Tell me kind of like how, how it all happens. Like what's the backstory on this? Well, first of all, it's an honor to be here on your platform, Chris, because I have been a fan of yours for quite some time. And um, mm -hmm. it's an honor to be here and to talk to your beautiful people um, about our new creation. And um, so Tam and I um, met in um, a, a coaching group is because she's also a coach. She's a, a very nurturing, loving, kind human being. And I can't wait for you all to hear from her. Um, and um, we totally bonded when we first met. And um, and there's some sort of like, like I know we knew, knew each other in another life. I just know we did. In fact, we were probably <laughs> sisters, um, yeah. but um but um, we, we continued to um, sort of stay in touch and even after the program was over and, and we both experienced um, some, some pretty major traumas in our lives. And um, so we started working together and basically coaching each other weekly and came up with a, with a system basically. Um, and um, we, we named it Light Weaving. And this is the first in the series, but um, Tam, I would love for you to give your background and tell everybody who you are. Right. Um, so I'm similar to Dawn. I'm, you know, I'm gonna be 54 next month. And I had the corporate career and, and did the, the management in different fields and um, always found myself kind of mentoring and, and helping people and kind of being that person people went to with problems and had some pretty life-shaking moments around the time I was turning 50 and just wanted more, wanted to be more authentic, wanted to find my purpose, what everyone talks about. And I started the journey to be a health and life coach. And that's how Don and I met. And I think the big thing for Don and I was in all our conversations, we met weekly. And in all our conversations, we kept coming up with the same thing. <clears throat> everyone tells you to let go. Everyone tells you to work through things and just let it go. And we're both like, how? <laughs> and we started talking. We started talking about, well, what worked for you? And what worked for me? And what's something we can just really simplify and list the tools so that people can just follow along like a really simple instruction book. And that's what we created, I think. I love that. Yes, the how to's, right? Everybody says, you know, do you know, the this is the process, but when it comes to releasing and when it comes to letting go, there's a lot of questions on, well, out of all of the things, how do we actually do that? And it, and it's scary. And and shadow itself kind of shadow work itself kind of sounds scary. Yeah. And you know, and we're kind of taught not to feel our feelings, to kind of squish them down. And the thought of bringing them up is actually quite intimidating when it doesn't really have to be. It can be nurturing and loving and, you know, and caring and, and that inner child work and, and all that stuff. And you can do it in a way 
that you love yourself even more through it and yeah. learn more about yourself. Well, tell me more about shadow work. For those that don't really understand what that is, can you kind of share a little bit more about what is that? What is the process and why is it important? Yeah, shadow work does sound like a very scary and sort of daunting task because the word work is in there. Um, but really um, what it is is recognizing those parts of us that um, really have been hurt um, for different reasons through our lifetime and then realizing that they are part of us and that they want to be loved and nurtured and accepted as well. So even though um, trauma happens, usually most people experience some sort of trauma, whether it be large or small in, in um, you know, what people, what our society would consider large or small, it's still trauma and it affects our lives <clears throat> and it affects how we feel about ourselves. Mm -hmm. And that is really key. So uh, working through those things that we want to release and ex at the same time accept with that loving kindness, um, doesn't mean that we have to relive a trauma. It just means that we recognize what it is. And we say, we see you, we know you're there. And, um, you know, we're just going to upgrade our system and our, our, how we think. Um, and to, and also when, once we recognize that trauma or that piece that has hurt us in our life in one way or another, um, it no longer is frightening. Mm -hmm. We recognize it and we're like, okay, I see you. I know you're there. You, you're not going to hurt me. You're just there. Right. Does that make sense? Oh, totally. Yeah. It's like in a dark room, you see the shadows on the wall that seem so big and you turn on the light and you realize, oh, okay like it's it's once you actually really look at it it's not as big and as frightening as when it is when we're actually just trying to repress it and push it down and not look at it and don't look at it and don't see it and yeah yeah and, and that key there is the repressing i think especially when we're children and small children um a lot of these little traumas will happen when we're trying to conform and trying to fit in and try to be like everyone else or we get reprimanded for something or something scary happens like your parents like picking you up from school and there's all these little things and when we tamp them down and repress them and ignore them they actually gain strength and they're running in the background and they're subconscious because our conscious doesn't want to know about it so it's yeah. running in the background and it's controlling so much of our lives and we don't realize it and it's coming out again and again and all the lessons that are getting chucked at us and and the behaviors and, and the, the lower feelings like the rage and jealousy and our reactions to things like what people like to call triggers now. Um, and that's all kind of played by that shadow self. Mm -hmm. And I think if we want to live real authentic lives, we have to embrace all of us shine the light on all those bits we don't necessarily want to recognize and see and do the work and like dawn said feel the feelings but don't identify with them right don't yeah. become them just yeah. work through the feelings and then thank them so that we can move forward and move on it's beautiful work it really is the best best self-love ever i love that because then you get a choice Right. When we're never looking at it, I, I love how you said that that is happening in the subconscious because it, it really is. It's like, oh, well, if I don't look at it, then it won't bother me. But by not looking at it, it is actually running in the subconscious and it is directing your thoughts and your behaviors and your actions and therefore what is happening in your life. And when you can actually look at it and do the work around feeling it and seeing it and accepting it, then you can release it and you can make new choices for how it is that you want to move forward with that. Mm -hmm. And I think some of our superpowers are hidden in those shadows, because what made us quirky and individuals that we kind of tamped down and shut up and, and conformed to is hidden in those experiences. So, you know, you get to become more authentically you and you find out the creativity, like what Don and I are going on the art book next, because that's what comes up when you start to do the work is you become more creative and all those quirky little things about you that made you special you know, come more to more to the forefront again. So. Oh, that's so beautiful. Tell and I want Don tell us about the first book. And again, this is going to be a series of books. So the series is called Light Leavings, and the first book in the series is Journal and Burn. 
Don, can you yeah. tell us a little bit about that? And that's available right now on Amazon. Yeah, it's available on Amazon. This is the hard copy. Um, it's a paperback version in a large format with larger font for those of us that may be over 50. Hello. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, <laughs> exactly. But there is also an ebook form. So the ebook form has the instructions. Um, this has the instructions plus journaling pages and pages of prompts um, as well. There are prompts in the ebook, but this has something we could actually physically write on. And there's something about physically writing out. Um, and journaling your thoughts and feelings and what you want to create and what you want to let go of. This that's, takes it to the next level of really um, releasing and recognizing what it is. Um, for example, I started writing in this um, to journal um, some uh, for some of the prompts that are in the book. Um, and I'm, I'm choosing three. I'm choosing three prompts every full moon cycle because that's how I that's how I run. I ran that way it's with the moon every full moon cycle. And and Tam and I both agree on this. We're moon children, um, and and we're women. So most women do resonate with that 28 day sort of cycle. Uh, we are ruled by the moon when it comes to women. And um, so every full moon, I'm going to choose three of the prompts, journal it rip the page actually out of the journal and burn it because that is the next step then in letting go, watching it go up and um, at the same time having gratitude go up with it so that really positive energy is released with what we're um, releasing and letting go of so that someone else in our, in our world, in our universe can utilize it and um, because everything is energy that's science and, and any energy does not die energy just transforms and so we're transforming it out there for someone else to utilize i love that you actually have that you spoke about writing it down and i think that that is such it's a simple piece but it is a critical piece because what plays in the mind actually when we write it down we use a different part of our brain Right. So when, you know, uh, Tamara, you were talking about, you know, the triggers or the reactions, when we're feeling that we're actually, you know, responding from that, you know, emotional part of our brain, whereas when we actually have to write it down, it actually switches into more of the logical part of our brain. So we can actually kind of look at it, process it versus just trying to make sense of it in, in, in your brain. I've never been able to just do any of that work just by thinking about it in my brain. So having this as a tool to really journal and and to look at it so that then you can release it I think it's so beautiful and I love that you get to just rip it rip it out rip mm -hmm. it up burn it do whatever it is that you want say thank you for the blessings and now it's no longer needed no longer serves me I think that's amazing yeah, yeah there's there's something about that um and and we chose um you know, we chose everything very carefully that really resonated with the premise of this particular workbook. We chose, we chose our fonts, we chose our background, we chose our colors to be very soothing. Um, Tamara is an amazing artist. She's a watercolor artist. And um, so the, there's something about water, there's something about watercolor that is soothing. And um, so, so we kind of combined really water and fire in this particular journal and burn. I love that. I know. I love that. Well, and the fluidity and the water and the moon, mm -hmm. and the oceans, you know, all of that fits together so beautifully. What is the next one? So you said you have a series of books, you know, you've got some other plans. And so the next one that you're planning is all about the creative process and art. Yes, it well, is. Yeah. I was just going to say, Dawn has an amazing story on where she went on to a retreat and it was, and they used art to actually go through the entire process. When she explained it to me, I said, that is exactly the shadow work. It was the exact process of going through from putting up from awareness all the way down to putting down your thoughts and releasing it into something else and then letting it go again. It's, it's beautiful. And so that kind of is what we based um, an idea of doing an art, a shadow art book on. So she's got to share it. It's just incredible. Yeah, I want to hear. 
Yes. So shout out to another coach, good friend of mine. Her name is Lulu B and she um, created a retreat and it was in the, on the panhandle of Florida and it was an art retreat and it came to me, the universe sent it to me right when I needed to see it. Um, for those of you that don't know, um, I lost my, my oldest, my son, Joshua, uh, passed away on August 28th from a brain tumor and after a three month battle and, uh, going through this grieving process, working with Tamara has been so helpful. I, yeah, she's my sister. Mm-hmm. Um, and, um, uh, the, the creativity in my life stopped. Um, and the joy in my life, I didn't feel like I could experience joy. Uh, there's something about that. And, um, and so the journey to joy is um, something that really has, uh, it, it's been a journey uh, starting with slow steps. But this retreat that I went to, which was all about art and dance, helped me really break through the threshold to experience that joy again. And it started with just moving my body to music and being forced to create because I was at this retreat. We're sitting in this art room with all these beautiful colors. And, uh, you know, she told me what to do and I did it. And I started creating and painting and coloring and using pens and glitter and markers and scissors and created some amazing things that really, like I said, broke me through that threshold to experience joy. So after that happened, I realized that art is really crucial in my world to start creating again. Um, And I think, I think most women have a creative side, no matter what that looks like. It can be like, for example, I've also been um, tumbling rocks and polishing rocks. That's a form of art, right? Um, Tamara is an amazing watercolor painter. She's amazing. (laughs) You're amazing. And um, I aspire to be like that, but I'll take some colored pencils and I'll color in something. And that feels like art to me. And I feel like We can start simple and that's what we're going to be focusing on in this next, in next, this next piece of work that's going to be called shadow art. Beautiful. I just wanted to say one thing there that just in case anyone missed it. um, When, when Dawn was talking about the emotion that was actually trapped for her, it was joy. Mm -hmm. That was the one that was being suppressed because it didn't feel right for her to feel that going through what she was going through so it's any emotion it doesn't have to be the anger and jealousy and all the bad things that shame that we're hiding away don't want to see it's anything that any feelings that get trapped oh such a good point holy cow yeah wow wow don that's amazing i and i remember chatting with you after you got back and you were just like yeah it was a big shift for her when she came back you could see it Beautiful. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited about creating again and, and creating in all parts of my life, whether it be cooking a meal, you know, baking, um, creating a program with Chris. Um, and it got me off the dime and I learned how to, we learned together how to publish on Amazon, which was super exciting. Don learned how to publish on Amazon. <laughs> that was Don. <laughs> you got to take the credit. <laughs> No, it was such a, just a few hours early in the morning of trying to figure out, you know, some technology is all that learning curve, Chris, that we talked about earlier today. So I love yeah. that. So what, what's next after the, um, the, the art, the shadow of art, is that what it was called? The art, I, I know oh. I'm butchering this. You're fine. It's called shadow art. So we're taking yeah. shadow work and we are really making it um, much more joyful by making a shadow art, because that's really what it's about. Tam, please take the ball and tell us about the third. Oh, the kind sight, the kind sight. Um, so <laughs> I, I, I can't remember where I heard the term or I would gladly give credit uh, for that one. But when as soon as I heard that term, I was like, oh my gosh, this is 
what self-love is really all about. It's the number one ingredient. It's looking back on all the things. It's calming that negative chatter. And it's it's talking to ourselves um, with kindness and, and compassion and, and understanding and empathy and like we would a really good friend or a, a small child. And um, it's employing that lens <laughs> for whenever we have to look back on anything we've done or anything that's been done to us or any of our life experiences. And I think with Kindsight, um, it's such a powerful, simple, simple, but very powerful thing um, that you just start to employ it everywhere. You really do. You just use it everywhere. And you catch yourself so much faster when the negative voices want to come into your head and start to berate you if you think you said something silly or you you know you you did something that you thought was dumb um and immediately it comes up it's like it instantly just shines a spotlight on that voice rather than the words that are being said to you and you just go oh no <laughs> i'm not gonna do, be doing that and you just it just becomes a habit it's beautiful it's a beautiful practice i think yeah. so we'd love to share that Oh, I cannot wait for that. That sounds amazing. Yeah, because so often, I mean, we we are our own worst critic and we all have the mean girl that plays in the background saying, you know, what you can do, can't do, shouldn't do, should have done, all of the things, mm-hmm. right? And it's just not helpful. It's not who we truly are. It's just that small part that is scared or, you know, looking for ways, you know, not to, not to mess up or not to lose some, some sense of love, safety, security, belonging. And I love that we can give it a short amount of attention, but choose consciously choose that. Nope. We're going to go in this direction. Yep. I hear you. I like to think about like, um, you know, driving the car, like she doesn't get to drive the car, right? Like that mean girl. Mm, That's a good one. Is to ride in the trunk. <laughs> she yeah, to totally. It's a spare tire. <laughs> exactly. Oh, and when we notice that she's driving the car, we're like, oh, whoops. Nope, you're not driving today. Sorry. And we yeah. Just- yeah. And I love what you told us the other day in our, in our class, Chris, which is give her a name. Give that mean girl a name. You know, mm. I've for mine and I'm naming her. I'm calling her out from now on. She <laughs> doesn't get drive the car yeah. I love that no more yeah. Regina Regina bye yeah. bye Regina, Regina. <laughs> bye. <laughs> oh that's a good one and I love the fact that you said um that even the bad voice is out of love mm-hmm. and out of fear and out of protection everything because that's really the whole thing it's really all of it is about love mm-hmm. and even the something as as horrible to yourself as as smoking or an eating disorder or something like that there's a moment there where you're trying to give yourself some love Mm -hmm. and that I think that makes it easier to forgive yeah it's because we were doing the best we could with what we had and you know and it's just it's easier to let go and that's all that's all about the kind sight too it's not even really thinking about it as a bad voice I guess I shouldn't even I should start reframing that (laughs) yeah compassion that we give to that part of us right the compassion like that Mm -hmm. that part of us had a reason it's just once again time to upgrade Mm -hmm. yeah I love that yep upgrade that operating system Mm -hmm. oh so good you guys this is so exciting so, so exciting and so needed. And I'd love that you're, you know, you've broken it down into these, you know, three different, you know, booklets so far, you know, the journal and burn and then, oh my gosh, I'm going to mess up the shadow art. Again. <laughs> yeah, shadow art, it's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and then the kind side, I am all about kind side. I think I'm going to write that on a sticky note and put it up on my Yeah, screen. excellent. That word, so fun. We should make bumper stickers. <laughs> <laughs> Where's my cricket? (laughs) This is so fun. Oh my goodness. So how can people get their hands on this? You said Amazon. So, and I will pop back in here or Don and tomorrow you guys can also pop in and just maybe put the link inside of the chat inside of Facebook. So, you know, people can find you a lot easier. So it's on Amazon and we'll provide the link. Any, how else can they get in touch with you? Don, I know you've got a community Tamara, do you have a community? How, how else can people get in touch? Yeah, I mean, I'm on Instagram for the most part. I, I, I do a lot of personal stuff on Facebook, but it's Instagram where most people find me. And it's just my name on Instagram. It's at the back of the book. It's just Tamara Langford on Instagram there. And um, so that's where most of what I do is on there. Um, 
I haven't had a huge online presence in this last year. It's, it's thanks to Dawn I'm back out because I, I was really, really hardcore focusing on my family um, this year. So, and it, but it was well past time that I start to focus back on my business. And I, I have Dawn to thank for really nudging me out there and just getting it done. So it's great. It's been excellent having coaching every week with Dawn. <laughs> Exactly. Like right? We totally. go so much further, so much more quickly when we've got support. Yeah. yeah. And we've done a lot of very hard work together. Mm-hmm. We've shed some tears, but we've also laughed a lot. And I'll tell you what, laughter and having that person that you feel safe with is yeah. um, super important. So, um, and that's what we both try to provide. Um, for our clients as well. It's not just heavy stuff. It's also light and celebration. Yeah. And really, you know, we talk about what's going well all the time. Um, but also we, um, I wanted to mention that another way to reach us is that we actually have um, an Instagram page for light wavings. It's at light wavings. It's L-I-G-H-T-W-E-A-V-I-N-G-S. One word at light wavings. So you can see us there. We've created a community. Beautiful. Yeah, actually, how did you come up with light weavings? Like you guys have got the best names, like so good. Well, I, do we remember, Don? Do we remember? Yes. Um, another. <laughs> she's our memory. <laughs> another amazing coach, and she's actually Amber Ingram. Um, we were in her coaching group together. Um, had a session, one-on-one session with me, <clears throat> and um, she came up with a name for me. We we came up with it together um, after sort of interviewing me and how I see myself and influencing the world. She said that I'm a light weaver, and so oh, we talked it. about that together, the two of us. That you know, that's what these are: are light weavings that we can infuse light and sort of weave it in through the world and so that people can get a glimpse of that light and and jump in and join us beautiful love it beautiful. so it is so so perfect it really is perfect for what you both are doing yeah don how can they find you where are you uh i have a, a group um my name is don janice j-e-n-y-c-e that is my personal name on my personal page that's my first and middle name it's also the name of my business um, i have a group on facebook that is authentic living for brave female leaders and if you'd like to join you can go to my personal page there is on my cover um, you can just hit the button and there's the link to get on that page. You have to answer a few questions to get in, but they're pretty simple. Amazing. So fun. Awesome. Ladies, thank you so much for being here and sharing this powerful work. I cannot wait for more people to experience it. Is there anything else that you guys wanted to add or share about? Is there only three or are there going to be more? Stay tuned. We're working. Yes. <laughs> we'll Stay see. Tuned. You're never going to get rid of us. I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Chris. We really appreciate you having us on and supporting us. Oh my gosh. I am really so appreciate it. I am so excited to share you and your, your books and the journal and burn and all of the amazing things that are going to come out of light weavings. I just think it's so incredibly powerful and, and thank you for sharing it. Thank you for being willing and courageous to show up live and, and to share this. Our honor. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Bye everybody. Have a great day.